Hi everybody. Uh, this is my Gudgeon slash T-Bar tank and I want to talk a little bit about the rainbow fish that are in there and the reason I lost a couple. Uh, a lot of you know I brought some home last week and one died overnight. Well I did have a second one die during the following day. Later that evening I did find a second one in there. Uh, I have since been back to my fish store. I've had lengthy discussions about my water and they are pretty much as puzzled as I was, although I think I know what's going on. Um, it's still a little bit of a mystery about the rainbow fish. The gudgeon that I lost recently, I think, died from similar reasons, and that all has to do with water hardness. A lot of people don't take water hardness seriously enough when they put fish in tanks. Um, I did do a little bit of research on the gudgeons. I did kind of buy them on spur of the moment, but once I got them home, I looked at them, and I was a little doubtful as to whether they were going to be able to survive long term, but I was willing to take the risk. Now, one of them did not. One of them actually died. I got three originally. One actually died uh, within two days of getting it, and I don't really know what happened there. I think that was aggression between two that had actually paired off. Um, and were in spawning territorial behavior. I think they actually physically beat the other one to death. Um, after that, however, I had many months of them being in this tank and looking perfectly healthy until one morning I came down and one of them was dead. And it was sort of bloated dead. Not bloated like bloat, but bloated like too much water retention. Uh, I know that is ultimately what bloat is, but this looked different than that. This just looked like sort of a dead body that had been in water for too long. Um, so what those clues told me, the idea that it looked pretty much okay right up until it died, it started looking a little rough the night before, and uh, I wasn't surprised the next morning to come down and find it was dead. Uh, that is usually indicative of a fish that's in water that is too soft for it. Uh, a fish that's in water that's too hard for it, if it's significantly too hard for it, that will generally kill a fish pretty quickly because they dehydrate. Um, they can't get enough fluid into their body uh, fast enough because of the um, concentration gradient with the dissolved solids between what's in their body and what's in the water. When you've got fish that should be in fairly hard water and you put them in soft water, the concentration gradient causes the water to flow the other way and the fish become overhydrated. And they can deal with this, but it really overworks their kidneys. You know, their kidneys are just constantly pumping out water and just trying to pump out this, you know, massive influx of water. Now, if you take a fish that's meant to be in really hard water and you put it in really soft water, this will still be a fairly rapid demise, you know, within days maybe, uh, or even hours it could be, I would imagine, depending on the fish and the softness of the water. Now... I have odd water. I talk about how odd my water is all the time, and the reason it's odd is because I have a fair amount of dissolved solids in it, but at the same time it's very, very soft. In fact, it's so soft that it has zero uh, degrees hardness, and I only have, I fluctuate between zero and one degree carbonate hardness. So I've got very soft water without very much buffering capacity, and in this case the buffering capacity doesn't have a lot to do with the discussion. But I have very soft water. Now, it comes out of my ground so soft and so acidic that I actually don't run it through a softener, per se. I actually run it through what amounts to be a neutralizer. I'm actually adding magnesium and calcium to the water to harden it up and bring the pH from about 6.4, where my groundwater is, up to just above neutral. About 7.3 is where I like my tap water to be. So, in the process of bringing the pH up, I also harden the water up. I add a lot of calcium and magnesium to it. Well, once it's gone through that process, it then does go through the softening process, and the softening process removes the calcium and the magnesium, which is what accounts for water hardness, or general hardness, and it removes it via... Uh, ion exchange medium and the ion that it exchanges for is a sodium ion that's why you put salt in your water softeners it's not the chloride in the salt it's the sodium that's being used and the sodium winds up in your water it doesn't make your water taste salty uh, it's way below the taste threshold in most cases I suppose if your water was bad enough and needed enough adjusting you might actually get above the taste threshold 
but where I sit, I sit around 200 parts per million. Um, I don't know for sure that that's all sodium, but that's about where my water sits coming out of my tap. Most of that is probably sodium. I'm probably at least 150 parts per million uh, sodium, or you could represent that as milligrams per liter, depending on how you want to view that. That's an interchangeable um, way of viewing it. So I've got this water that's really, really soft, and yet I have dissolved solids in it. So it makes it suitable for some fish that wouldn't typically be able to live in very soft water like this. The additional sodium ions allow them, it sort of buffers their systems, uh, not in the pH sense, but it buffers their system as far as not getting over flooded and all their electrolytes washed out of their body. The sodium is actually replacing electrolytes that are in the water. Uh, and the hardness of, or, or the dissolved solids of the sodium actually also help reduce the stress on the animal's body as their kidneys are working furiously to pump this water through. Now, the, the further outside their comfortable range they get, the harder their kidneys have to work. So with the gudgeons, they, you know, they're not brackish fish, they're not necessarily hard water fish, but I suspect they probably would do better in a little harder water than I've got. And I think that's probably what happened to the one I had. Just over time, it wasn't able to cope anymore and its kidneys finally gave out. Uh, this fish has probably adapted and is doing a little bit better and will probably be in it for the long haul since it's made it this long. Um, I say all the time that, you know, the 20 or 30 minutes that you're floating your bag, that is not acclimating your fish to your water. It's just sort of getting it used to it. I guess by the purest definition, you could say it is acclimating it to it. That's what getting it used to it means. But if you have a fish that really needs to adapt to different conditions than it's coming home in, it takes time. And it can take weeks or months depending on how much of a transition it needs to make, what kind of transition it needs to make, what kind of animal it is, etc. So these gudgeons or false gobies as they're sometimes known uh, are pretty adaptable fish, they're pretty hardy fish. So this one has lasted as long as he's lasted and I think he's going to be okay. Um, the rainbow fish is still the puzzle. The they came home, they were stable, they've been in the same tank down at the fish store for months now, they've just, they were a pretty expensive fish, not a lot of people were buying them, um, and they've had a tank full of them for quite a long time, that's why I wasn't too worried about quarantining them, and I brought them home and put them straight in this tank. They've been in a tank on its own system for months now, so they've effectively been in quarantine, there were no other fish in the tank except these. Um, Rainbow fish are fairly adaptable fish. They can tolerate harder water. A lot of rainbow fish can even do quite well in brackish water. These I'm not really familiar with. They're called Marcy rainbow fish, but I believe that is just a marketable name for what is actually a Parkinsoni. I'm not 100% on that, but I believe what I've actually got is the Parkinsoni. And if that's the case, then I don't see why they wouldn't be able to live in my water. The pH was very, very similar from what I brought, and I mean very similar, like 7.4 versus 7.5 similar. Um, the water hardness in the tanks they came home in was about 3 degrees hardness and about 2 degrees carbonate hardness. You know, again, very similar to mine. There's no reason a rainbow fish should not have been able to make that slight adjustment. The additional sodium ions are the only thing that makes my water kind of odd and head scratchy. And once I explained it to the few people I was talking about and they understood how my water system works and everything, they agreed with me that if anything, the additional sodium in my water should have helped uh, ease the stress uh, on the rainbow fish when they came home. So I really don't have any idea why they died. You know, maybe the shock of the changing environment I, I seriously doubt that. That's kind of a catch-all that people come up with when they don't really understand why an animal died. It may very well be that the gudgeon was aggressive with them. I didn't notice any marks on them. I didn't notice any areas that looked like they'd been, you know, physically damaged. But they may have been. I don't know. You know, I'm just kind of assuming that my odd water, usually when I can't put my finger on what happened, I can kind of usually blame it on that water. But I don't want to use that as sort of a catch-all, blame-all either. My water is not some kind of crazy water that fish have a really hard time dealing with. The gudgeon makes sense. The, the way it died, the length of time it took, the way it looked when it died. The rainbow fish don't make any sense. I don't understand why they would have died based on my water. So 
at this point, my only conclusion would be that they may have experienced some aggression overnight. Uh, I explained when I brought him home that if that gudgeon strikes at him, whether he can actually fit it in his mouth or not, is not necessarily the point. The point is, if he tries to, the strike itself may be enough to physically damage and injure the fish. Um, so that's kind of what I'm, I'm chalking that up to. And actually, as I've been watching these fish this morning, I do see one in there that does have a mark on his side. That does look as though he's been struck at. Uh, and that could have either been by the T-bar, who was fairly aggressive, or it could have been by the gudgeon, who is not necessarily territorially aggressive, but is an aggressive feeder and eats small fish. And these fish are pretty tempting for him. They're right on the cusp of being small enough for him to make a snack out of, uh, but are just a little too big and then a little fast, you know, it's a lot of effort for him to catch them. So I can imagine if one just happened to be right in front of his face, the resistant, you know, the temptation, especially on that first night they were in the tank together. So that's what I'm chalking the death of the uh, two rainbow fish up to. But the gudgeon, I do believe, died because of my water. And on one final note, I will say about the sodium and how the sodium actually buffers the um, transition for fish or sort of softens the impact, I'll say, of the water that's too soft. Um, a lot of people know that when you have sick fish, aquarium salt is often um, suggested as sort of this catch-all remedy. Aquarium salt seems to cure everything. That's not actually the case. There are some things where the higher specific gravity of the water will kill microbial life, um, you know, in the same way that putting a freshwater fish in salt water would kill it. When you're talking about a single-celled animal, you don't necessarily need that much additional, you know, salt to kill it. So sometimes the salt in the water, it, it really is the, the sodium ions in the water uh, and the water density that is actually killing the organism. More often than not, what you're doing when you put salt in the water for your sick fish is you're just relieving the stress on the animal. Your animals that are in fresh water have specialized cells within their gills that are custom build to do nothing but uptake the small amounts of sodium that are in your water and they do a lot of work to pull sodium out of the water as your fish need sodium the same way we need you know sodium in our bodies so freshwater fish have their work cut out for them getting sodium and if you've got a fish that's sick and you've got a fish that's stressed you know, it's the same thing as telling somebody to get plenty of rest and drink plenty of fluids, you know. You don't want them overworking their body, doing things they don't necessarily need to do. So if they can relieve all of the energy they're spending on trying to pull sodium out of the water, because you've put some aquarium salt in there and now there's lots of free sodium in the water, it just makes their job of pulling the sodium out of the water a lot easier and reduces the stress on the animal. They can then focus that energy on their immune system and, you know, it's chicken soup for the fish, basically. So putting sodium in the water, putting sodium chloride in the water does not necessarily cure what's going on. It just helps your fish and relieves the stress and bolsters its immune system a little bit. So there's my sort of roundabout discussion about fish and total dissolved solids and sodium and so on and so forth. So stay tuned for more. This was sort of a spur of the moment. Didn't really know what I was going to talk about specifically in this one. And that's kind of the way it rolls around here. You never really know what you're going to get. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of that. So thanks again for watching this one. Please subscribe, and I will see you real soon on the next one.